welcome to the State Department on this very special International Visitor Leadership Program. Each of you, all 50 of you, were chosen because of your commitment, dedication, and passion to STEM, and for your interest in growing new ideas. We're part of this program run by the US State Department called the International Visitors Leadership Program. We were nominated by somebody from the US Embassy in our different countries to come to America on a program called Hidden No More. And the program itself, funnily enough, was inspired by the movie Hidden Figures and this idea that there have been women who have been making waves throughout history but their stories aren't told. What this program has really been about is not only best practice and what people are doing here, but having that exchange about the different tools and expertise that we can use to tell those stories. My main goal is to learn as much as I can from, from everyone I meet, even from the smallest conversation and seeing how can I work towards improving STEM engagement for young people in Guatemala. We here have 50 women from 50 different countries from all over the world uh, who are professors, scientists, and basically just women who help other women in the STEM field. Because in the STEM field, we know that there is not a gender balance, and uh, to get more women involved, uh, this program is kind of supporting that. We have to overcome the barriers in a systematic way, and to do that, we need to be together. So this is a really good opportunity to exchange ideas and projects and collaborations with women all around the world. Today we're actually at the National Geographic offices and we're looking at the focus of the use of storytelling in any areas, whether it be human interest, the natural world and things like that. I'm delighted to talk with you today about storytelling at National Geographic, the kinds of stories we tell, the platforms that we tell them on, and how we're really reinventing a 131-year-old brand to tell some of the most important stories of the world. This conversation about how to tell stories, about the importance of telling stories, was really, really inspiring to me. I also write and co-host a podcast that focuses on women, uh, female scientists. I think everybody has a different journey. I've ended up being the first a lot of times, the first woman. You know, it will be a lot more equitable of a country or world when there aren't so many firsts, right? When just having a woman in charge is the normal course of doing business, and every time a woman gets a good job, somebody doesn't have to write a story that she's the first one. We have the same success stories, similar challenges, and what is important is the approach in which we want to solve these problems. How do I communicate my point of view, whether it's through public speaking, through social media, through writing, all the ways that we can tell a story, what would that story be that you want to tell after this experience? We are given a training on like how to story tell and how to use it as a, as a tool to express yourself. Because at the end, storytelling is uh, all what uh, uh, creates an impact to, to the world. People are coming together and sharing these experiences, which are really about kind of telling each other that it's going to be okay. So we started with Washington DC, then we were divided into six different groups and we went each to a different uh, smaller city. Payload Operations Integration Center here in Huntsville? Yes, yeah, so five all the time, and then when the crew is awake and we're really busy because they're doing a bunch of science experiments, we bring in additional support staff. We need more diverse perspectives uh, to solve bigger problems. So it's not only that women should uh, be in the field, but they should also uh, participate more in top leadership positions 
to actually solve the world's problems. Women make up more than the majority of the world population, so it is important for women to be involved in STEM. Their involvement is very important for development and growth of our countries. They're part of the economy development of a country, the, the advanced in science and technology, and we need to have women there. We just arrived to Boston and I'm so looking forward to go to the MIT University. So here in Boston we're meeting the tech giants of the world and we're seeing how they are working with diversity and attracting more women in STEM. I'm Jean Hopkins, WGBH Vice President for Communications and Government Relations and I want to welcome you this morning. We're so pleased to have you with us. I've been struck by how many women are involved in science, how many women um, are taking up those technology courses. The contrast with what we have at home is so big. However, I'm very much motivated that as women we can do it. Access to knowledge is power, and that power is the ability to come back to my country with new ideas, with new ways of thinking, with connections that not only with people, but with concepts that we can integrate. This was one of my biggest uh, uh, wishes to come to MIT and now my, my dream and my wish come true so it's, I'm very extremely happy actually. Easy to see, it has interesting optical properties at the nanoscale. So Boston kind of felt very different from all the other cities I felt because there is this innate curiosity of continuously wanting to learn new things, discover new things and make the world sort of a better place for everybody through technology. And this was very inspiring for me. And our mission is to do research, education and outreach on systems that will provide more energy to a growing global population and at the same time reduce emissions to combat climate change. So being in MIT and having the chance to discuss many international aspects the, with the um, director of education was really a moment when, where I, I thought, let's go back home, let's go back to my university where I graduate and to enlighten them that there is many things they can explore and they can learn and be something different than what they thought they will be. It is a dream become true for me here. I hope we can visit it again. When we are uh, spoken about our life journey, we, say, we always say that I am alone in this journey. But now today I am saying, no, I am not alone. I have a lot of friends, a lot of sisters who are being through in this journey with me. Uh, we all come from very different backgrounds, but we all have a story and we're sharing these stories. So when you share your personal story, you get connected with the other people. And that is what this program is all about. We are at Disney Studios. Today we had a panel of three software engineers that were telling us how they incorporate science into arts or into filmmaking, which was very exciting. I was always thinking that I'm playing around with my career because I'm an artist, I'm an author, I'm an engineer. But here I came with the conclusion this is the right path to continue and try to have something similar back home, a mixture of science and art. You need the, the new scientists, you need the new engineers because it's a fresh mind and you need them to be part of the journey as well. So I think the Girl Up organization, it's very good initiatives for this teenage or high school student to build lots of leadership uh, skills in them from now. So Girl Up is a global leadership development initiative. We have a platform for teen girls who want to change the world. What are specific things that I, as a teenager or anyone, can do to prom help promote girls to go into the STEM field? Women in sciences need to speak out a bit more and uh, be seen by the world. 
because uh, when girls get to see people who are in STEM and successfully so, they also aspire to go into it. I like to think that STEM, it's a universal language like we've seen here, right? You know, English, Spanish, whatever language you speak, that can get lost in translation, but mathematics and science can't. This program is very important because you get to see women that look like you. For me, that says a whole lot because it makes me believe that it, it is possible to become a professor one day. It is possible to get that PhD, be a doctor one day. The women that I've been with, they represent so much and they open my eyes of what I can be. I can be strong, I can be helpful and listening to their stories, they really empower me when I go back home. I can help young ladies to like be in the STEM fields. There is no gender in science, so that's what like I want to promote back and I would like to see more girls who will be inspiring others in the future in my country, that's all. To hear the no more, I met a STEM sister so that uh, I have a network for all my life. Uh, I'm going back with 50 new friends and 50 new role models and 50 new leaders in my life. I was asked the question, what do women represent for me, these women? And I would say they represent to me um, the kind of love, global love the love that will bring our society forward that is not egoistic thinking about only themselves but is thinking about the society at large and how we can make this world a better place that is yeah that is what it's about